Back to the politics, and Germany's opposition Green Party has overtaken Chancellor Angela Merkel's bloc in uh, certain opinion polls. That's after the Greens nominated Annalena Baerbock as its candidate for Chancellor at September's national election. Support for the opposition party is at its highest ever at 28%, according to Kantar's weekly survey. Meanwhile, support for the CDU-CSU Conservative bloc dropped two points to 27%. Joining us now is Daniel Bayaz, Bundestag member for Germany's Green Party and leader of the Bundestag Investigative Committee into political involvement with Wirecard. Danielle, good to speak to you. We'll come to the Wirecard story shortly, but I wanted to start with thinking about your poll ratings and whether they're sustainable. Is it that the Greens are doing well or that the Conservative bloc is doing badly? And do you have concerns that if the rollout of vaccinations goes well, that the Conservative bloc might start to do better in polls? Well, good morning. Thank you for uh, having me and giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, green politics. So first of all, I mean, people are dissatisfied uh, with uh, the uh, current government, of course. But at the, at the same time, uh, topics like climate change, people are very aware of that we need to push forward in, in these topics. And uh, first of all, we are very happy about the strong momentum we gained from the polls. Uh, we have released our party's manifesto a few weeks ago. We have nominated uh, Annalena Baerbock uh, to uh, run for uh, the chancellery, which is a big thing for the, for the Greens. But at the same time, we know uh, election polls are no election results. It's still uh, five months ahead to the elections. Uh, we will concentrate, stick into our topics, organize the election campaign, and uh, try to convince as many as people as possible that the Greens are uh, in the uh, have momentum and are willing uh, and able to lead mm. the next government, and we will work for that. Do you think that uh, your party has moved to the centre, Danielle, to try and pick up votes, or do you think the centre has moved to, to the Green Party's territory? Absolutely. So just a few weeks ago in my uh, in my uh, home uh, state, Baden-Württemberg, the economic powerhouse of Germany, 12 million people are living there. Uh, the Greens turned out to be the strongest party and they will again lead the government in a, a corporate environment. So people, not only people, but also, also businesses trust us that we can organize this transformation. And I think the same thing will be possible on the national level because the Greens have moved to the center, yes, but also a lot of people from the center who have voted for example, for the Conservatives back in the days are now voting for the Greens because the, because the topic of sustainability and transformation of the economy is an important topic to them. And I think this gives us strong momentum. Yeah, you've mentioned some of the experience of power that, that, that the, or at least being majority party in certain regions that your, that your party has already. Danielle, what has that taught you about relationships with business and how to work with business? So um, when you look at the history of the Greens, way before my time, yeah, the Greens were a very leftish party. They were anti sort of establishment. But I think this narrative has changed a lot. If you look at uh, a, a, a polls, but also analysis by ex experts, the Greens sort of are part of the uh, of the establishment and they want to organize uh, how do we transform not only public institutions, but also private companies to a better sustainable future. And the Greens have realized that we need partners for that. And, it, and businesses and corporates are important partners. If you look at companies at Daimler or SAP or Deutsche Bank, they know that transformation is happening and they are interested in stable, reliable uh, economic policies. So we start off uh, working on this partnership of politics and uh, corporates. And I think the, the Greens have understood that. And many corporates out there have understood the same thing, that we are, mm. have a symbolic partnership to organize this transformation. There could still be potential voters, though, who see you as a, a too much of a single-issue party. What do you say to them? Well, uh, back in the days, this might be true, but look at Baden-Württemberg again. Uh, we have reached 33%. Uh, this is almost 10 more percent uh, than the Conservatives. And if you want to run a country, it's not enough just to uh, care about uh, 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 economics or uh, um, environment issues. You need to organize European uh, uh, politics. You need to organize especially public health issues in a pandemic uh, a time. I think we are ready for that and people are uh, thinking this too. So we gain a lot of support uh, from really uh, giving answers to many political questions out there, not only a single issue party. 
Let me get on to another subject, Daniel, which is around Wirecard. You've been leading the Greens team in the Bundestag Investigative Committee into political involvement in Wirecard. And I wanted to get your thoughts on some of the latest developments. Somebody else on the panel from Die Linke, Fabio Damasi, has raised the issue of a potential link. He suggests that there is a link between Virtual Solutions and Jan Marsalek, formerly of Wirecard. I should say that Virtual Solutions, the company, says there's no evidence that their software has been compromised. And the German government says they have no knowledge of any link between the two. Do you think, though, that any link needs to be further investigated? Would, would further investigation be warranted here? Absolutely. So let me take back a step for one second. So this is a, this is especially a uh, um, an accounting fraud scandal, the biggest in the German history, and we have worked hundreds of hours in public hearings in the in, in the last months to figure out actually what happened. The, I, I, I see especially three things: a high level of criminal energy by the folks of Wirecard. Second collective irresponsibility by all public institutions, basically, and the auditors. And third, a lot of lobbyists that have been lobbying for Wirecard to uh, tell the story of a highly su successful, innovative company. So we've cleared out this part of the story quite, quite a lot, which is not really uh, detected so much is the connections of Jan Marshallex to security institutions, to people in Austria, in Russia, in Libya, and so on. My question is, have there been any German uh, security interests um, uh, violated? This is a question that has been unanswered so far, so we have to further investigate in, in the question that you've raised uh, uh, concerning also um, uh, 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 digital uh, solutions when it comes to security issues, because this is highly politically, ob obviously. OK, so further investigation needed. Uh, Daniel Bayas, thank you very much for joining us. A Bundestag member for Germany's Green Party.